And everybody, hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Who, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm here. I'm still here for sure. We don't, the, here's the thing about this episode, Ben. Tell me is the that thing about this We're episode. recording it pretty quickly in succession of the last episode. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, are. last episode we mentioned the votes were as close as possible, but that message hasn't reached the Jazzy J fan ears yet. So it's possible that by the time people hear this episode, that message will have leaked out and people will have just like come in droves to, to vote on the Patreon, but they, it will, that will have recorded too early. I have, I have wondered what it will do to my identity mm -hmm. if I lose my husbandship. <laughs> like I'm a little bit, I'm like, there's a part of me that's like, oh, it's all in good fun. And then there's another part of me that's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like I mean, it's the thing about the thing about it. It's determined um, by by Patreon support. So yeah. no matter what, hostmanship is determined by people supporting both of us. That's true. And yes. so like the, there's like there's like a every single part of my brain, every logical part of my brain is like no no one is here because they're like I don't like one of them. <laughs> it, it's literally just a game. But I, but I also feel like there's there's like a small a small part of me that will die a little bit inside. What, who's this? I mean, who knows? The thing is, the thing is, I feel like even if it ever happens, which still feels like a long shot, like it will take careful coordination and planning by the jazzy j people and it will do nothing except rally the troops on your side we'll and see i feel like it's it's a it's a week-long victory at best is how how it would what, what i do feel to me. the thing i will uh, the thing i'll say about it is that i do enjoy the fact that the system is in some capacity there's been like a shake-up so it, do, yeah. it does feel like things have been like put into <clears throat> flux a little bit right, where yeah, it's, it's like, like oh man anything's <clears throat> possible Right there, there is currently <clears throat> greater capacity for change than there ever has been before. It's almost like physics. Yeah, like an object in motion tends to remain in motion. Right. It's like the object is in motion. Oh, it's in motion. I it's think it's moving. <laughs> Someone out there is like Ben. That is that not is, that. That analogy does not work. Your physics is bad. Anyway, let me tell you about the time I bought three hundred thousand gallons of water. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand gallons. Much, how much ocean is that? You reckon? Oh, su such a just such, such a such, such a, a nothing amount. Su such an infinitesimal amount of ocean. <laughs> but um, okay, so I, I'm having an issue right now with my utilities, and it caused me to reflect on a previous issue mm. that you and I once had with our utilities. Okay. And so this is like, it kind of goes into like one of these things where it's like, there are certain things as you enter the adult world with adult responsibilities that you have absolutely no bearing on what is normal right. or expected. Mm -hmm. And this very thing happened to me when you and I moved into our first ever, like uh, it was a house that we had rented together right when we started Super Carlin. Right, Brothers. yes. And prior to this, every apartment or complex I had ever lived in included water inside of the utilities and so like i right, never like that was just part of the rent payment it was just part yeah. of your rent payment so i never really had a direct relationship with how much these things cost right and so right out of the gate when we moved into this house we started getting our water bill which was for like nearly $200 a month. Mm -hmm. And it was one of these things where it was just like, I was like, man, I did not know water was so expensive. Like, I don't know, like, like that's such a bummer. And at the time I had just really like been getting into running the aquarium company and I was making water like p ultra purified water, which actually has some amount of water waste involved okay. in order to then make my salt water. So there, there was even like maybe like a, like a possible circumstance that it wouldn't surprise me if my water was like a little a bit little more higher than the usual than the usual. And, but that like, but the thing was, is that it was, it was way too much. Yeah. And so what happened was at this period of time, we had a, like one of those running toilets. Yeah. And this is a very common problem with like, if your water bill ever spikes and you ever get it and you're like, Whoa, this is like 
five times as much as usual, it's usually because you have something like this happen. Like, like, like something is running the water nonstop. Someone it, left the hose on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but the thing about toilets is that they're, they're constantly self-draining. So if you have a, like the, the back tank is just constantly like filling yeah. water, it runs all the time, but there's no mess either. So yeah. There's, there's never like a, it's whoa. just that sound. It's just yeah, that sound. Yeah. yeah. You kind of like be listening for it. But if you ever hear it, do something about it because it is costing you money. Now, if I recall, the toilet in question wasn't even like our main toilet, though. I know it was right. like the downstairs. It was like toilet. the downstairs toilet, which if you can imagine an unfinished bathroom in the sense that uh, there was a whole open basement. Someone built one wall to cut it in half and furnished one side of the wall uh, with like carpet and stuff. Yes. And then on the other side, they built a toilet, but nothing else. Nothing now else. Now you have a good idea what that room looks like. Yes. So it was, it was a weird place to use the toilet. It, it very much was. Yeah. So like realistically, the only it was the <clears> same room that I was making my water in yeah. for the aquarium stuff. So I had a bunch of aquariums and stuff set up down there, like holding tanks and fish and stuff like that. Uh, and then there was this randomly this toilet that I literally used more <gasps> as a floor drain yeah. than I used as a toilet there's something weird about using a toilet in like a really wide open area it, even if that room is completely locked off and closed away it's just like i feel like i should be in a little bit tighter space i'm exposed i feel exposed there's yeah. definitely no one in here but man there's a lot of space i would also say because it was in a basement it was kind of drafty mm, and yes like being there's in no a, doubt yeah a drafty it's uncomfortable it wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't good. But so the point is, is that this toilet, when we moved in, was just running. And I had never had a water bill before. Yeah. So you and I and our roommate at the time were just getting all these bills and we were splitting them up. And I was just like, you know, like at the time, even having one third of your water bill being like 60 to $70, yeah. it was like... That was a that was a big hit. Big junk. You know, it was yeah. like it was like, man, like that's that's a lot of money we're spending on water. But I never knew any different and I had no baseline whatsoever for how much water was supposed to cost. So right. this entire period of time is going on where we had lived there for like 10 months to a year. And finally, I was helping our friend Trey install a koi pond. And he, I think he made a comment where he was like, oh, I wonder if it's gonna like jack up my water bill to to, you know, to fill it up or whatever. And I was like, oh, you'll have to like, you know, like, let me know yeah, what it does or whatever. Like, what's your usual bill? And he was like, that's like, you know, maybe like $35, $40. And I was like, what? What the what? I was like, mine's like 200. And he's like, you're paying $200 a month for water. And I was like, I guess. <laughs> you're I guess. in a situation like, ah, oh, I, uh, hmm. And it, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a glass shatter moment because you're like, why am I spending so much on water? I was like, and, and then like I immediately started blaming myself too because I'm doing this aquarium business and I'm like, yeah. my two roommates are paying for like all this water and it's like they shouldn't have to do that. Like you know, this is it's not their fault we're using so much. Yeah. Water. So like the guilt hits me and I'm feeling awful because it's been going on for months. I don't even know how to like rectify it because I'm like, I guess I could pay them back all the extra money they've been spending because of you know like whatever. And so I, I call the water company and I was like. Hey, I was talking to a friend and they were telling me that like their water bill is like way lower. And I was like, how, how, like, do, can you see, like, can you come and like, look at my account and like, tell me, am I, like, am I using like too much water? And they were like, oh wow. Yeah. You're using like 30,000 gallons a month. And I was like, what? Impossible. I was like, I was like, I know I'm using water for the aquariums. I am not using but, like that's Cause that's the other thing is that I have a reasonable sense of scale for water gallonage. Sure. Yeah. You know, like on the, given your, yeah. Previous. Uh, employment exactly yeah, yeah yeah so i was like no way we are not we are not filling a backyard swimming pool <laughs> yeah every, every month. month like yeah. there is no way we are doing that even if everyone was taking like two baths a day oh yeah and, <laughs> yeah and even then you wouldn't even be close <laughs> right you wouldn't even be close and so um i i reached out to our landlord at the time and i was like hey like i, I our water bill is really high i don't know like what's going on and she was like oh do you have a running toilet and i was like I don't know. I don't know. Like, what does a running toilet mean? Yeah. And then it was just like, click, 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 click. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <gasps> and so over the course of this year, we had 10 months where we were paying for 30,000 gallons of water mm, at a time. Wow. Literally flushing it down the toilet. Literally money down the drain. Yeah. Yes. And that was, that was the thing too, is that like, um, the, the water company, like I remember being so mad. I was like, why wouldn't you call and ask why we're using so much 
water. It's like, that is so much like, should like, is there a refund? And, Cause I, nah, Oh, like, right. Like they don't care. No, <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah. They're just like, great. Yes. Yeah. And so like, there's the, like, I had this like glimmer of hope where I'm like, oh my gosh, we've like basically been putting money into a savings account because they're totally going to refund us for all this extra water. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, like the water's gone. And it's like, <laughs> you bought it. <sighs> uh huh. So anyway, the reason I bring this up is because I've had this, I've had this like other ongoing dilemma. Okay. So it's, it's w- once again, I, I find myself in a utility problem oh situation. Boy. Right. So I moved into my house uh, in 2016 and the house was built in the 1930s. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's coming up on being a century old. It's an old house. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that because it's an old house, it doesn't have maybe all of the standards of building practices that might be current today. Right. Which is to say insulation period. And so, yeah, it's, it's not heat efficient. Right. <clears throat> and so I'm, I'm having this like massive problem where, where each month and this time I know like this isn't me being like unaware of how much electricity is supposed to cost. Yeah. It's like my electric bill is like in the four hundreds. Whoa. Yes. And it's like, it's like, what is going on? And so it's like, it's so funny because I have like this morbid fascination with it Yeah. because it's for one, it's very frustrating because it's like, it, it makes me feel guilty because I'm like one, just using like an obscene amount of electricity apparently. Um, but I also, I, I like love the experimentation I've been able to do in my efforts to fix this. Uh huh. And so have you managed to like nudge it down? barely barely that's frustrating it, then. it is frustrating and so it's like throughout the course of living there it's been like okay well i'll switch all of my lights my, all of my light bulbs over to like led light bulbs yeah. or i'll put these daily use lights on like scheduled timers so that they can't be on longer than they're supposed to so like, yeah no matter what they won't be on from the hours of you know 10 p.m at night until 8 a.m. the next morning because there's never a period of time where I need this area lit. And that would only even be if I forgot to turn it off anyway, which I don't usually do. Yeah. So it's like I've I've like done all these things where it's like, okay, I've tried this, I've tried this, I've tried this. I literally had the energy company come out and do a home audit of yeah. my house. And I did, like we talked about on the pop all of last year uh, or this year, all of the renovations where I got like all new appliances and like, you know, replaced insulation in some of the walls where we took the walls down and everything. Yeah replaced my like hot water. I, I converted that from like electric over to natural gas. I converted my, uh, my water heater over to natural gas. It's like, it's like all of these things I've been doing and it's still like ridiculously <laughs> high. It's that's so frustrating because it's not, like clearly whatever the biggest problem it's like, clearly there's a, a single problem that is, it's like an 80, 20 rule. It's like you have one problem that is causing 80% of the, the damage and you're like you you've been meticulously chipping away on the other hand i like the 20 percent yes. side of things it's like like if if this other one of the if the big thing was fixed whatever it is like you'd be doing such a good job like chipping away at like your electric bill like oh i'm being so efficient i'm you know like moving the needle those final little percentage points yes in yes. the meantime you have this giant snowball that's just like eh, you can do as much as you want the big problem's still here i, I know and i can't find it. Oh, and no. it and it's like it's driving me absolutely crazy Ugh. because it's like I, i'm at this point now where like i've like literally looked into like maybe i should just get solar panels for my house and it's like i know for a fact that they won't even be able to like where my house is, the square footage of my roof. It's like, I know even with, with that, I'll only be able to cut my bill down to like $200 a month, which is still about two times what it should be. Right. And that would be with a $20,000 investment in solar panels. Right. So yeah, it's like, yeah, maybe you move it down $200 a month, but still then the amount of time to get the savings back on yes like, like the panels the like the investment in the panels it's like i am like playing this game that i don't know how to play is basically what's happening right and it's like how how much money am i willing to spend to try to save money on this one thing and it is like the most it is the most infuriating thorn in my paw and in every month and i'll tell you the the insult to injury yeah is that the uh the electric company will send me my like my my bill in my email every month and i think they literally just have an error in 
their their code on like the automated email. So every month I will get <clears throat> my notification for my bill and it'll be like, um, here's your latest, you know, American Electric Power bill. It's $117. And I'm like, oh, I finally did it. I finally <laughs> beat it. I did and it. I'll be like, view my bill. Then I'll click and I'll log in. I'll do all the things. $437. And I'm like, oh, you jerk. <laughs> like it's literally just an error in the email that it's telling wow. me that it's lower. So that's frustrating. I have had a saga. And so I bring it up because I'm like, I'm like at my wits end with it. And yeah. it's like, for one, I love my house so much and I don't want to move mm-hmm. uh, until until I can eventually like build a home that I would live in forever. Um, but it's like I'm I'm like literally talking about it on the pop because there is a part of me that hopes that someone out there is an electrician and they know what the electrical equivalent of a running toilet is. And they're like, oh, I guarantee you have this like one switch in this one corner of your house that used to do it for this reason. Just flip it off. And it'll just be like, flip it off. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be like, it's like, it's like you've got the, the software that comes with your printer, like running in the background of your computer. Yeah. You know, like you bought a printer. All you want to do is just plug it in with USB cable and hit print and have it work. But it's like, oh no, no, no. You need to install this terrible software that came with it. Are you going to understand it? No. Will you use it ever? No. Will it be on at all times? Impossible to close running in the background, slowing everything down for the next 10 years? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like printers, I mean, and we've talked about printers driving us crazy before. They're the worst. But they always need updates. And I'm like, what is going on with printers that they always need updates? But I will tell you what makes me even more frustrated is that I do uh, billing for the aquarium company where I have to remote into mom and dad's home computer. Oh, gosh. Which is where the original accounting software existed for this. And so in order to send bills, I have <laughs> to go through and, and send them basically from my computer, from their computer and literally mom and dad still get the the same notification that I remember having on their computer. Like when we were kids yeah. about updating the whatever. And I'm like, I have been staring at this same update the same prompt problem for literally, I mean, how old am I now? 32. <clears throat> and it's been 14 years since I've lived at home. It's like, yeah. It's like half my life. That's crazy. I've been dealing with this update. I, just, I don't know why they have to be so problematic either. Because like when we were kids, I remember we had a printer and we had a program called Print Shop Deluxe. Do you remember that program? I sure do. Yeah, you can yeah. make like greeting cards and banners and stuff. Which we did all the time. <laughs> Which we did. Okay, exactly, Ben. We did it all the time. The printer was effectively a toy. Yes. That you that we used all the time to make stupid things and would print them out and just like you know wh- whatever whatever the the and worst the, the worst was the banners because yeah. you could make the banners as big as you wanted to yeah. and it would scale it to as many sheets of paper as was necessary yeah so you could have a banner that says like like Benjamin and Jonathan's room and you can make it like 25 sheets of paper long and yeah. then it would print them and then you would have to cut them and then tape them together yeah so that it was like cohesive right. But and the we, fact and, and is, but the fact is, we as eight, <clears throat> seven, nine year olds could use the printer without any hassle at all, ever, nearly endlessly, without any updates, and without like I don't, you know, I assume at some point or another, mom needed to replace the ink, but it felt like it was never ever a problem. It really like, didn't, yeah. And you, I mean, you're right. We would print. 15 page long banners of like a hot dog <laughs> that said welcome to our bur- welcome to our room or something i remember the yeah, hot dog, the hot image. dog banner and of course like to you know 10 of the pages are just the middle of the hot dog waiting to be connected to each other which we probably didn't even do I, but it bothers me because like that happened we did we would we would play with the printer we would and it would work a thousand percent of the time and now, no, I don't even, I, uh, if I have to print something, it is like, it stresses me out. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it is. It is a real, real, real ball of yarn. No, it, it's such a thing. I remember, um, we, we just recently for Addison, there is a, um, sleep bassinet device, uh, that is called a snoo. I don't know if you ever yeah. heard of this. But okay. I've heard of them. Yeah. They're, they're expensive. And so like f- when we were doing our uh, like baby registry and stuff, we were like, eh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and definitely we, we did not end up getting it. Um, but with 
uh, trying to get Addison to sleep at night, one of the things that this device can do is basically it will listen for your baby to start crying and then it will actually start to like like rock them to okay. put them back to sleep. Gotcha. And some people say that they are like completely life changing and these like right. amazing pieces of technology and my baby wouldn't sleep <clears throat> and now they do and, yeah. and all this type of stuff. And on the whole, Addison just sleeps pretty well anyway. So we were just Fantastic. being a little silly. But yeah. Alice found a, uh, a website where you could actually rent one mm-hmm. for like a hundred bucks uh, per month, and so we we're like, okay, like let's let's rent one for a month. We'll get it, and we'll see how Addie does. Right. We put her in it. She hated it, so it was like, nope. Good thing you didn't buy it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was like, thank goodness. So literally, before we got billed for another month, we had to like pack it back up in the box to mail it back, and it's this big, like unwieldy thing, and it's rather heavy because it's got this like gyroscope wiggle woggler device inside of it that like you know moves them yeah, safely okay, and, and right, all this right. stuff. So it's it's sort of like an endeavor. So like the big thing was getting it back in the box, but then like I got home uh from work a couple of days ago and Alice was just like, you know, in a in a frenzy about it because she was like, I like I just can't I can't print the shipping label. And I was like, well would you try? And she, like this was like one of those things where I have actually set up the printer at my house successfully to where you can wirelessly print from the other devices and it does work. Wow. But like Alice was so convinced that it wouldn't work Mm. that she literally, like what she didn't try was file print. Oh, wow. And so it's like, well, actually, and I take that back. She did just assumed it didn't work didn't check the printing tray okay. and then i got home and she's like i really like i wanted to i want to return this thing before we get built again but i can't figure out how to print the you know the label to send it back and it's you know it's so like i walked over and i was like oh it's actually pretty easy and i like went like do this went upstairs there's two printouts of the oh, shipping label on the printer and man. i was like oh this is hilarious uh, it this is like, work. yeah <laughs> like she like that is that is where we are as society is yeah. we have no faith that the printers that, that it worked that we're even willing to check right <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it worked. We returned it. Well, that's fantastic. Didn't work. Oh. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. The, the snoo didn't work. The snoo didn't work. Yeah. That's the this that's the frustrating thing about when you're getting baby stuff <laughs> is that there's like a bazillion products for everything and they range from like very simple and to extremely like what a like they have arranged things such that things look like it's like the really cheap version or like the really luxurious high end version. Sure. And which is like how they, you know, um, market many different products, but it's, it's so frustrating to me because like you of course want to think like you're getting the best thing for your baby to take care of them the best. But like the exact example you just gave is a great example because the snoo is probably one of the more expensive items, but it does not like it's there is there is no correlation between how much you spend and how much it will help your baby. Oh, yes. In the end. Yes. Like it's all it is all a matter of what your baby will end up preferring. It's like not all babies are the same. Like you, you know, so there's it's so frustrating. If every single parent probably has something that they bought that they would tell other parents like oh my gosh life changing right. like these they are the best this this swaddler <laughs> device or whatever it's like got to have them got to have it the in the things that i've learned is that never buy snap onesies oh absolutely do not buy snap let me tell you <clears throat> yes if you want to avoid so much hassle in your life like tell the people this is what you need to put this on the invitation to the baby shower is no snap onesies only zippers or or magnets or magnets because i this is like something that alice and i stumbled across while we were just shopping like it was i think it was the first onesie i ever bought for addison and had no idea that i was even doing something unusual or like unique in any way shape or form yeah. i just happened to be at like a like a children's boutique and there was like a magnetic onesie and i was like that's really neat um but if you want to have like a like a grand slammed gift for somebody this is me literally being like yeah you want to know the life-changing thing you should uh-huh. get <laughs> um but they're they're like they are what i would qualify as really 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 good gift territory mm. because this is something that is expensive at like a $30 price point. 
right. which is which is like whenever I'm buying gifts, I love to find the crosshairs here. Yeah, where it's like you're not spending a lot of money. What you're doing is buying like spending a lot of money maybe for this one thing like what is yeah like you, it's a it's a great gift if whatever your like price limit is like if you have like a, a 20 dollar spending limit you want to find what what item is at its most high end and most luxurious at twenty dollars. Yes, like like yes. you wouldn't you would normally buy this for like a dollar, but in this case, someone bought you the twenty dollar version, which ultimately only cost them twenty dollars. But this is like a now you have the best kind. Yeah, and and that's the <coughs> thing. So like with onesies, where you're going through several of them a day, mm-hmm. it's like you you certainly wouldn't want uh, like me as a parent. Like I I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to go out and especially as fast as she's growing, I wouldn't want to buy you know. 10, 15 of these $30 magnetic magnetic onesies. Yeah. You know, because that would just become ridiculously expensive. Yeah, because they just don't um, grow them so fast anyway. Exactly, exactly. But so in, in the meantime, though, I do think it makes a very good gift yeah. because it's like, oh, now this is cool. And like every time I got to use the magnetic one, it was like, like oh, this is so crazy. fast. Yeah. It, it was also the first one she outgrew, though, which was really oh, sad. Oh, that's like, a bummer. Oh, but she's outgrown something already. That's exciting. I know. What Thanks for noticing. <laughs> wow. Wow. Growing so fast. <laughs> I do. I do want to. I want to go back to something you said, though, because there's okay. this there is this like this uh, thought experiment that I have been having that I think being a parent has really like shown a light on in a way that I th- I like I don't know if this is a good analogy. OK, but I, I think it might represent very nicely how so many of us get caught up in arguments about things that have fairly minimal actual impact. Oh, okay. Um, and so this is the thing. It's like, it's there, there it's so frequently, it, it, I always go back to that dress that everybody saw as like white and gold. Oh or, yeah. The or, white or gold. Yeah. yeah. So or the white, blue or gold. Right. I think it was, it was like blue and black or white and gold. Right. Like the two colors you might yeah. see. And it's this, it's <clears throat> this really weird optical illusion, but it, it really like took hold because everybody was absolutely sure that they were seeing it correctly. And I think everybody really thought that they were being like punked by everyone else. Right. Because they're like, what are you talking about? It's blue and black. And it's right. like, no, it isn't. It is white and gold. It's like, are you messing with me? And it's like, no, I'm not messing with you. Are you messing with me? Right. And it reminds me of dude, where's my car? What does mine say? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> what does mine say? <laughs> dude. Um, <laughs> but the point is, is that it was very easy for everybody to be so absolutely sure that they were correct because right. like how often do you really feel like your eyes are deceiving you? Right. And like it's, it's right there. You're looking, you're looking at it. You know what gold and white look like, right? It's like the evidence is right here. Yeah. But the thing is, is for one, it doesn't really matter at all. It's just literally a picture. Um, but also I think that there are, there are not all causes, but I think there are a lot of causes where it's like, we could get real, real, real mad at each other because for one reason or another, we've chosen one side or another. And the example that I would give here is the difference between breastfeeding and formula feeding, because this is something where there's been rather huge mm, debate right? Uh, in, in terms of like the, the parenting. And, and I do think there is like a lot of people who really think very, very strongly one way or another and that can sort of lead to like some shaming depending on like which decision or route you go which is just entirely not necessary because if you're feeding your child like right you know, they they are going to grow and so the argument that i that i would have here and in the the real reason that i think there's a lot of like debate about it is that typically children who are breastfed come from families that uh the opportunity for the mom to commit the time and energy to doing it are typically higher income families. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's like, uh, versus where if like the mother might need to go back to work, then they might need to put them on formula because the mother has to go to work and and can't, right. Can't yeah. Be there to do the breastfeeding. Exactly. Um, and so a lot of people will say like, well, breastfeeding yields like these greater ultimate outcomes, but then it's sort of like a false, false causality. Is that the right way to say that? It, it it's like a what is it like um it's like a correlation not a causation yeah i yeah. Always, i always get i never know how to to say that but yeah. the the thing that people that researchers have come in and looked at it with it is like we're not really sure is it the breastfeeding that's making a difference or is it literally just children that come from households that are able to breastfeed typically are just afforded 
way more opportunities. They might live in higher income areas, go to better schools, you know, have parents who put them in classes and violin and piano and, right. you know, all of the rest. And it's like, was it the breastfeeding that made a difference or was it all of those other things? Right. Or is it the environment <laughs> in which breastfeeding is most available? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so basically like the, the conclusion that my brain has like attempted to like grab onto and this is not data backed this is just me spending time thinking about it because it's a huge part of my life right now um is sort of this like let, let's just say that like one is better than the other i think the the impulse to want to do this is that like when you have this first child it's like you want to be under the impression under the belief under the the operating system that you are doing all of the best things you possibly can for them yeah but during this period of time that is very very limited compared to what it will be in the later years of parenthood Mm -hmm. in terms of like what you can be doing for them and how those things might determine how your children might ultimately turn out Uh or like what opportunities they're afforded and so in in my mind what it's come down to is almost like okay let's let's just let's just agree with with the the statement that that breastfeeding is is superior to the tune of there's a greater amount of immune system support granted to your child and it but it's like i I think we're literally splitting hairs inside of one percentage point Uh, right like the like the margin of error (laughs) it is like so yeah you're gonna wash it out (laughs) somewhere in life on some greater scale that has that it, that will like just completely trump the amount of gain bet- between these two things right like like i would argue like let's say the the, the outcome of, of of someone's life is, <clears throat> is maybe like this this one percent difference based on this one route or another formula for, versus breastfeeding but then it's also like but once they're older you're like emotional availability or time commitment might represent like 48%. Right. You know, and it's like, it's like, we're all getting in an argument about which, which way to optimize the 1% that happens for the one, the first year of their life. When literally how, how much conversation are we having about this 48% block? Right. You know, (laughs) like where it's like, this is a big junk. Right. Like, you know it's like this yeah it's this weird situation where you have like the answer is as long as like you're feeding your baby good job right yes yes exactly exactly, right yes like that's the end of that sentence but like because there are two things and because people want to make sure that they want to feel like the decision they made is the best um they will always you will always choose whatever whatever whichever one you did as like superior and and like that was the best choice and as a result, people will get just, you know, because there, there is something about like babies and they're being like new and like really setting them up for success in their life that like makes it like more visceral or raw or something that like you made the wrong decision or you're treating, you're not, you're not treating your child as well as you could have been. It's like, you're feeding your baby. Good job. That's really the end of the sentence. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. New, new babies be difficult. Right. It's like, but I think you're right. This happens a lot where you have like there because because there are two options, people will choose. People will choose a side and they will disagree with the other side because there's two options, even though both options are perfectly great and don't don't really make a huge difference. Right, right. Yeah. So it's like in in my mind it's almost like if you were to if you were to like extrapolate out of this and sort of like project it onto like greater society. So like t- you know, step away from like children a little bit and like be like, well, this this company at one point in time supported th- this cause, let's say. And so it's like you know, so it's like this big like b- like battleground topic of like, so I, I can't support this company because at one point in time they did this one thing and the other people are like, well, I'm going to because of this or whatever. And it's like that that one decision that that company made, it's like, is that really the problem when it comes to like the greater issue at large? Right. Or it's like, or has what's really happened is these people think the dress is white and gold and these people think it's blue and black argue right you know and it's like we're, we're talking about like the like let's let's not tackle the what's a good analogy here what i'm trying to get to is let's tackle the root of the problem mm. and not like <clears throat> yeah let's feed the baby let's yeah we're tackling the leaves right now right you know, not the roots ah uh, this is the name of the wind <clears throat> reference is I it believe, right like you want to attack the branch yes 
Well, yeah. that's how that's how you fight in the K10, I suppose. Maybe and maybe if you're really trying to take down a problem, you do need to eventually hit the roots. But <laughs> right, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. in name of the wind, as far as like the fighting goes, you don't want to hit the leaf or the branch, you or the, you don't want to hit the leaf or the root. You want to hit someone in the branch because that's where you can affect them the most. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The ADM are so wise. They are so wise, except. Uh, except weirdly about how babies are made. <laughs> so look, we came full circle. Amazing. We, we made it all the we way. We made around. it all the way. Okay, I have a different story. This is kind. Of, I feel like it's kind of in the same vein. Okay, where it's me. like, whereas this is people caring about something that matters, and it really doesn't matter which side you choose. They're both right answers. This is. I had a situation that I, I feel like is just continuously keeps playing back in my head for some reason over the past couple of weeks. So I'm just going to get it out of my head. Oh yeah. Okay. But it, this I'm, is I'm the exact opposite. It was where people were really, really caring about a thing that absolutely made no difference. And I got stuck inside this weird circle of not being able to solve it. Okay. Okay. So can you, can you tell me the thing that doesn't matter? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you what doesn't matter. And it was, it was like this very niche case, but okay. So at my old job at the, uh, at the concert venue, one of my one of my duties was to update the call waiting music. Okay. Okay. Right. So like someone calls, oh, can I talk to whoever? Put them on hold. While they're on hold, they're gonna hear something. Okay. What they're what they were gonna hear, uh, based on the setup we had, was the radio commercials for any upcoming shows we had. Oh, okay. Got it. Right. Yep. So like, oh, oh, you know, you're going to be put on hold and it'll say Monster Jam coming February 23rd or whatever. Yeah, very fittingly, I feel like they were the the audio was was variable. It was. Oh. Though for sure it was variable because okay. you're getting the commercials <clears throat> from like a thousand. And it to me, what it seemed like happened is that years ago, uh, someone had come up with an idea that like, oh, Maybe a way you can also try and sell tickets is to update your your call waiting music. And someone said, cool, let's do it. How do we do it? Well, the way you did it. Do you remember the early days of MP3 players pre, yeah. pre-iPod? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wild West out there. I know. I know. If yeah. you don't remember, there was about a hundred different options you could choose. There were. There, like, all, it was just, I have an MP3 player. It's better than a CD player, right? And they were just like printers. They came, uh, Everyone came with their own individual software. All of the software was bad. And it didn't have a way to actually download music. I remember, like, I got mine. I don't even remember what brand it was. But I was, like, so excited. And I got home. And I was like, I don't even know how to, how do I get the, wait. Okay. I put the software on here. Now, can I, how do I get songs onto it? And it was like, yeah, you just, they hear, and like the instructions would be like, put your songs here and then download them. And be like, but where do I get the songs? <laughs> yes. Like, oh, I know. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, I, I absolutely remember this. I remember getting my first ever MP3 player and I was so excited because I was like, oh, I'm going to be able to have like, you know, like, like hundreds of songs on the same, on the same device. How cool will this be? Yeah. And it literally took me like, three hours with dad just like pulling our hair out to put like 11 songs on it with yeah. the only 11 I ever was able to put on it. Um, yeah. Which is literally less than the number of songs I could have just put on a CD. Right. Yeah. So super. <clears throat> so that, so anyway, anyway, I have to imagine the decision to make the call waiting music, the radio commercials was during this time because the way you did it was they had this incredibly janky, very old mp3 player okay that they had like jerry rigged into the phone line and like had another wire coming out to power the the battery so that it was like always plugged in and wouldn't die okay and it's hard to imagine it like like the, this big concert venue was using that oh ex- exactly ben exactly it's like this this giant building is using this tiny crappy device because because you know it just wasn't that big a deal sure right and i mean the, the way they had it hooked into the phone system, like there's just wires coming out of it. Just look like loose, unprotected wires. Okay. Like, it, like to pick it up, <laughs> it was so terrible. And of course it had its own software. Um, and so this, this tiny MP3 player sat behind my office chair in okay. the building. Okay. Right. And it was plugged in to my computer and my computer had the terrible uh, software and every time I had to update it, I have to like open that software, get it to work, get the songs in there, import it, and 
uh like even even picking up the mp3 player was terrible because like every single surface of it was like covered in buttons that if you touched if you grazed you would press the buttons oh sure and, you know sure. like the interface is not good anyway and it was like no you need to make sure you like you get the song on there and then i don't it's like i don't know how it's working it's like push this button until these three symbols appear and that means it's going and it's like all right <laughs> Got it. Like these are the instructions. So I've got this janky MP3 player. Wires coming out. Terrible software comes up. I don't like updating it, and it's like it doesn't feel like it makes a difference. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, that's the setup. That's what I got here. Okay. I don't like dealing with it because it's hard. It gets finicky and annoying. Well, and so, good good news is is you haven't worked there since well, yeah, 20, yeah, 2015. Haven't, so. Yeah, this wasn't a problem. But even when I was working there, there was a point where like I don't know, like eight months passed. And I just hadn't updated it. <laughs> like, I just nice. didn't do it. Nice. I just did not do it at all. Not mostly because at some point I just completely forgot. And so like eight months later, I'm like, mm, you know what? I should really update that. And I remember going in and going, I cleared out. There was like 10 shows on there that had come and gone. Like the idea when you're at these places is like the moment a show was over, everything about that show should like exit the public eye sure like it's off the website the next morning all the posters <laughs> are down all the flyers are down it's off the marquee it's off the, you know everywhere it disappears okay so that's like that's like the standard you're being held to so some of these things are like eight months late now <laughs> okay very has not mattered i finally update it and then like two weeks later one more show let's say it was monster jam or something like happens and then we're in like a meeting and someone um someone who works on staff like actually was like oh hey um are you in charge of changing the on-call music? Because I was listening the other day and there was like still a Monster Jam thing. And my boss gives me these like dagger eyes. Like, aren't you supposed to be updating that? Like, we need to make sure that these things come off the moment the show is over. And sure. I'm like, oh, don't worry. Okay. Good news is it's only been a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, because okay. yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now it's only been like a week. And, but this is like the weird time where someone's actually caught it. <gasps> you know, oh, like no. someone has caught that. Oh, something was left on there because I immediately went back to just not updating it because um, but I was now in this weird position, right? Because like I'm obviously they're like, why isn't it updated? Like sh this is on your to do list every week. This, is, this should be done, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> but it's like, oh, but it's like I I sitting there. No, it makes no difference sure you know because like it's like i can't say it out loud because it will reveal the how how poor a job i've been doing Got but it. it's like but i know that i haven't updated it or i've updated it once in the last eight months and nobody noticed because this doesn't matter because the call waiting music isn't selling tickets i would bet the number of tickets we've sold because of the call waiting music is zero like it doesn't make a difference and it's like but I was still in trouble for not updating it and could not reveal the difference it did not make because it would put me in a worse position. <laughs> this is this is very interesting. Yeah. This is very interesting. This this like in so many different ways reminds me of this like uh, like infatuation that people have with search engine optimization uh -huh. or, or SEO. Yeah. So it's like in and, and I think in a way that is it's like literally I think so few people like really understand how SEO works right. or how to actually get it to work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's like this really odd thing, like where, where, you know, like you'll see friends post a photo or whatever of their dog and then they'll have like 87 hashtags underneath it where it's like Australian shepherds of Instagram and like a hashtag right. Australian shepherd and hashtag, you know, and it's like, it's, you, it's, it's such a weird thing where it's like, being able to successfully like you're thinking that like, Oh, this will be great. Like more people will see it. And it's just like, it's you're, you're again. Yeah. You're talking about like the difference between like a 0.1% right of like performance deviation. Exactly. And, and on some level it's like, if, if you were in like a highly, highly competitive field with like high search ability and people are looking for you, then you need to complete this step. Yeah. But like, the, like just the use of hashtags is like one of those things that I think there is this like misconception that like, Oh, like if you can just master the hashtag, then like you can totally put yourself on the map. And it's like, that is not the way it works. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like you are, you are literally talking about like one of the final polishing details of getting yourself out there. Right. Is, is getting that hashtag. And so my guess is that like, there is a, like, I have to imagine that there is some kind of a non-zero amount of impact having the call waiting music be outdated. It's but like, 
but like I would guess it's like to the tune of 10 ticket sales on a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Like, (laughs) yeah. Like over such a long period of time where it's like, it's like, it's like technically, technically it makes a difference, but like, it's like, here's the thing. But it doesn't. All it does is set you up for failure. Cause it's like, Oh, you have nothing to, like to me, the, the ticket sold by it is zero. Like you have nothing to gain by having it there, but you do set yourself up to have people notice that it's wrong. Sure. Like it's like putting up, it's you, you now have a way in which to be wrong that you don't need because there's no, there's no upside to having this here. But now if you don't maintain it, it looks bad. Right, right. It's true. You know, you know what it's almost similar to is the subscribe button that pops up at the end of like the YouTube videos where it's mm-hmm. like, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's like no <coughs> one hits that button. Like, right. That, like that is not a used button. You like, should hit, you know what we should do? You should hit it right now. If you're, if you're watching on YouTube, just click it right now. Like click the button. Boom. My guess is that, makes a that difference. most people watching are already subscribed. already subscribed yeah. yeah so it's it's you know th- those people are like two steps ahead of their carlins yeah um <laughs> but, but uh um this is like one of those things that i feel like even even early youtube like they desperately wanted you to do they wanted you to be using all of the features yeah and so it was almost like youtube's like deal that they had with creators was like use the feature and, and, and like and this like, is still what, how it feels yeah 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 it's like and it's like, and they're, and they're, it's like they're like they're saying it's like use it wink use it wink like like it's like it won't be as effective because anybody will ever actually use it but we the algorithm will pay attention to the fact that you used it and we will reward you for that despite the fact that it doesn't actually work right and it's like what a weird thing yeah like what a really weird thing that is it it, there is often this feeling on youtube of like yeah when you're uploading like all the stuff you have to do on the back end it's like there's like this whole big block where you can put in a bunch of keywords for yeah like search engine optimization it's like there is debate about whether you should fill that box with as many as you can or whether you should only put just the most descriptive things and make it like very to the point for exactly what you want right and it's like there's like cards and end screens and you can look at the click through rates and stuff on those. And for the most part, like it's pretty low. It, like most people aren't clicking through on those specific features, but you like, I, you still have to put them in there because by putting them in there, like the apparent, you know, the, the belief is that the algorithm likes you to use all the features. That is the belief. Yeah. The, the very like abstract, like we don't actually really know what's going on, but that is the belief. Right. It's like, it, this is like right now, if you watch a YouTube video, there's also like, yeah, there's a subscribe button. There's the like button and there's the bell button. Uh huh. And it's like, it's so weird that you have the subscribe button and the bell button. It's true. Right. Because they, like uh, the, the very minor difference between the two is that if you push subscribe, then when you go to your subscriptions tab, I supposedly all the videos from the channels you've subscribed to will appear there in a list right. and you will be able to, see those videos. Whereas if you click the bell, that's telling YouTube you want a notification when said channel uploads new videos like popping up on your phone. Right. But it seems like you kind of want the same thing. Like, but, but like it's hard to determine like what is the difference? Like it just seems like you should have like the subscribe button and when you click it, it says, would you like to receive notifications? <laughs> Right. You know, like, I don't know the different. I mean, please hit the bell, you know, go for it. They, I, I guess it helps. There you go. That 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 <coughs> might literally make a difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is, is pressing the bell. But uh, it's it, it actually it reminds me the way you just described it a little bit is Instagram. If you go to uh, people you follow, mm-hmm. it will actually give you like a little bit of like interesting information mm-hmm. about like these are the pages you interact with the least. And these are the pages that show up the most. These are the pages that show up the least. And my weird thing about this is that I follow so few people on Instagram that like, it it is never not the case that I, that I reach the little, like little thing that says like, you're all caught up, you know, like, uh, and, and like for me, I can literally click a thing that will say like, show me older posts. And then I can like go back and like see stuff 
that I have already seen before. Okay. And like th- this could be one of those types of things where it's like you follow so many people that you're never caught up. Like you literally never see. Yeah. Like that little that little token pop up. Right. But that is a thing. Like you can literally have seen all of the things that Instagram thinks to tell you. But then it also will tell me that it's like these are the accounts that we sh- that we don't always show you stuff from. And it's like. I'm always caught up. Why are you not showing me literally every single thing that literally every single person I follow posted? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there is no need to withhold anything from my feed. I am always caught up. Yeah. So very weird. It is really weird. It is really weird. But when it really comes down to it, this, and this goes back to that, like emotional availability for your kids taking up 48% or whatever the, the arbitrary amount that I applied to it was, but it's like, what what any of these platforms want, what they know is how much your content keeps people on the platform. Right. And what they really, really, really want is for for if like if they click one Super Carlin Brothers video, then they have stats that say then this person will then then a a viewer will then stay on the platform, whether or not it's even watching more Super Carlin Brothers videos. Right. It's just on the platform for another hour and a half. Right. And so it could be the case that we do like a Spider-Man trailer unpacking and it's like people watch ours and they don't, maybe they don't watch the rest of our videos, but they might be like, I want to watch all of the other Spider-Man unpacking videos now. And so then they go and do that. Right. And it's like, those are the paths that, YouTube is tracking. Right. Like if YouTube notices your video is good at getting people to click on another video, it's going to keep serving your video. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because what they'll they'll have figured out is that you're the entry point for time spent on their platform. Exactly. And if if I had to guess any reason why our channel is successful, I have to imagine that is what it is. I mean, I, I my guess is that a lot of people like as they enter into a given fandom like Harry Potter, for example, if if you stumble into like one or two of our Harry Potter theories, you're like it's very easy to get stuck in the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's a lot there. Not there's stuck a- to enjoy yourself falling through a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I've been falling for thirty minutes. <laughs> um, exactly. Nice, 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 nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. How about how about time for a a, a good old tangent? Okay. No, tangent. Transition. Transition. Woo! Hey, we're back. Okay, so I have I've had this um, this question, deep philosophical Ben question. For oh you. boy. Okay. Okay. So my curiosity is whether or not the activities that you do in life, like as as far as it contributes to general happiness. Hold on. Are you staying with me here? Uh, uh, maybe. Okay. I, I need you to finish the thought. An individual's relationship with their happiness or just being happy in general is, is I'm going to go out on a limb and say is directly correlated with how much they believe what they're doing is contributing to the security of their ability to keep doing that thing. Does that make sense? Oh boy, that was a real Ben Carlin phrased. Um, I know, I know. Sentiment. So the 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 idea is, and, and I started very basic because I always I, in psychology one hundred and one they talk to you about like the hierarchy of needs. Yeah. And at the bottom of it is you know like is food, water, shelter. So it's like as as cave people once upon a time that would have been like your daily job, like was never reaching the top of the pyramid, which is self-actualization. It was like your goals all the time were food, water, shelter. Mm -hmm. And it's like everything you were doing all the time and always was, was filling that was that bar. Like you were, you were attempting to stay warm. You were attempting to have fire. You were attempting to have food and potable water. Um, and, but my, my argument there though, is I almost think there's a relationship between like technology and how far up, the pyramid you need to go to achieve happiness. Okay. Whereas like, I feel like like a cave person might feel mighty fulfilled at the end of the day Mm -hmm. if they were able to capture a rabbit. Right. Because it's like, as, as their life has progressed, they have established the skill and they're able to in some way, shape or form regularly capture a rabbit or catch a fish or build a fire. And the reason that that brings a lot of fulfillment is because 
literally there's there's no uh like external force in a sense i mean there there is you know environmental issues illness lack of medicine those types of things but things you would also maybe not be like entirely aware of if you were a cave people Mm -hmm. um there's there's not there's no one else who can like really take your ability to capture a rabbit or catch a fish or make a fire Sure. So your uh, your singular lone ability to maintain your entire livelihood is very assured. Okay. Does that make sense? Because it's like if if you know how to do those things and you know that you know how to do those things and you can consistently do those things, nobody can just like show up and take away your ability to to do that very thing. Okay. So I think like as time has gone on we have moved up this this hierarchy to the point where we, we are not really like um, and, and not as a sweeping declaration for all people on the planet at all times. But chances are, if you are listening to a podcast, I'm going to assume that food, water, shelter is not part of your absolute immediate daily concern. Right. And that chances are those things are not being achieved by way of your own physically going outside and creating or like like being able to provide your own solutions you're not like hunting or growing the food exactly <clears throat> exactly and so what what i think is interesting about it is that the further in technology we get the less our individual skills have to do with fulfilling these very like base levels of the hierarchy of needs okay but it doesn't mean that there is not now external forces that can maybe compromise your sense of security with those things. So for example, like if you go to a job where you are like an insurance salesman and like there comes a day where your (coughs) branch closes or there is downsizing or your performance has been deemed not quite good enough then it's like all of a sudden it's like you your ability to control the circumstances of your life are are taken away in a way that i feel like your ability to hunt a rabbit in a more primitive sense Mm -hmm. can't be well i would okay are you following like the analogy because i know it's very heady uh yeah i i do think i'm following what you're saying like if if what you if the way you provide is by you know hunting rabbits, then no one can take your rabbit hunting job away except you know the weather or God. You know? <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> yes. Like yeah, like I mean, the seasons will change and that'll make a difference. I would say like one. I don't think like cavemen are though like if are are concerned with feeling a sense of like fulfillment you know i I would absolutely agree with that like Like they're not concerned with like being like spent being happy right right, right. you know like like i don't think that there is enough self-awareness or even knowledge to be concerned yeah over those specific things yeah and i would say my argument here is not it's like maybe if you like if you lose your job like you don't maybe have but like well i would say you're right. Like most of that stuff has been figured out, but it's all mostly just been combined into um, like money, basically. Okay. Like it's not whether or not you are able to go, you know, kill the rabbit or boil the water or make the fire. It's whether or not you can buy those things. Yes. Right. So maybe someone can like cut off your current like style of income but at the same point they haven't like like taken away your ability to have a job no 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 they 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 certainly haven't but i think that this is probably where what what is able to be taken from you i think is sort of like maybe where i think some generalized like anxiety or concern or worry Mm -hmm. comes from yeah is because there is a much greater unknown if if like the current circumstances are are like removed or stopped 
in a way that is like either outside of your control or unexpected Mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. But I still think you're still way better off now than you were like as a caveman. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) The the difference here, the difference here is, is almost like, I feel like it's a, um, it's a very like odd way to look at different mentalities. Mm -hmm. Possibly like, like I wonder if it's like, I would agree because there is like, modern medicine and comforts and technology and whatever. I mean, like th- things have just gotten so much better across the board and it has allowed us to exist in such a greater sense, but it's almost like a really impossible to analyze, but interesting to think about thought experiment as to what was the general sense of like, um, centralized, like fulfillment inside of any one individual mm-hmm. as like, as like this cave person versus a modern day insurance salesman. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, do you think like, like a modern person just feel feels less fulfilled? That would maybe be the argument. Okay. Or, or, or the, and not even the argument, I think just my own personal curiosity. Okay. Um, Do you, do you personally as a person feel fulfilled? I think I struggle with it. Okay. I think I struggle with it because I think at all times it's, it's, like, um, I, I tend to, I, I've wondered about this before. So like, you know, about me, like I have like 10 million ideas yeah. and I feel like the, the fact that my brain is always spinning on ideas is more of a like symptom of me still like spinning the wheel over and over and over again, attempting to like find the thing, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So I, I feel like a lot of me is almost sort of like that, like, I guess what I would want to think is that there is a, there is a point in time where like all of those ideas would like stop because I found the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I found the en- like the place where I like, I want to be able to like put all of my energy and I just know that it like it works. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I suppose like the, and, and this is, this, this is me, me p- purely attempting to like, to like um, psychoanalyze yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, at all times. It's like, like, I think that I will, I will recognize that like this, this constant asking of questions or, or bringing up of ideas. It's like, I am very aware of the impact that it has on the people around me. And it's like the type of thing where it's like, it's probably one of the characteristics about me that I have the least ability to control. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, like I, I could see where it can, it can, uh, like be weighty on both you and Alice who are constantly on the receiving end of a little <laughs> hundred hundreds of ideas perhaps. And, and so it's like, I would love for that to not be the case. Like I would mm-hmm. love to not have that impact right on you guys. But it's also like, it's, it's like, it's not like something I can just, it's like a valve I can turn off. Mm-hmm. And so to answer your original question, I guess my, my, self-assessment of of me would be that th- it comes from some kind of just like not quite fully fulfilled mm-hmm. s- you know like wondering why you don't feel that way yes exactly right. yeah yeah like, <clears throat> why do i keep trying to think of ideas for other things i could do if if everything was just great right does that make sense i guess so yeah but but who knows maybe as a cave person i would like you know capture rabbits and be like you want to wish we could do we should, we should really get into fish. Like, well, we're really good at rabbits, but fish. <laughs> Have you seen them over there? They're yeah. pretty neat. <laughs> Bears come out. They eat them. That mm-hmm. must be something. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> right. So the, the, like, real, the real like, question like, for me is... like, Cave Ben, the important thing is that we have food for the winter, and we are guaranteed to have food for the winter if we keep hunting the rabbits. Right. But fish. <laughs> but fish. But fish. Like... They're, they're cool. Yeah. They swim. We would get to stand near the water more often. Yeah. And you know how I like water. <laughs> the water is dangerous, cave bed. <laughs> you already mentioned the bears. <laughs> but I love the bears. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, that's the thought experiment. <clears throat> that's all I got for, for that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we are at about uh, about a good stopping point, I think. <laughs> You're like, let's get away from this conversation. <laughs> Run. Well, I don't know. I can't tell if you're like hoping if you're like seeking any sort of advice. It doesn't seem like the sort of thing I could just like advice you out of or anything 
or yeah. if you just need, I don't know. No, I, I mean, I, in general, at all times, whenever I talk about these things, I always feel like it's very like cathartic just to like put it out there into the mm-hmm. ether. There's, there's always sort of that like wondering or, or thought that like someone listening will be like, oh, I have a thing like, like right. you, you just said something that totally means this right. and, and they'll be able to tell me. But th- this has also been the case for me where I've always, 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 always wanted like for there to be like a piece of the puzzle that someone could just like slide in and it's like, aha, uh-huh. uh-huh. that's what you needed. There you go. So if you have that one irregular shaped piece that looked like it was supposed to be a side piece, but somehow it's actually a middle piece, mm-hmm. just just give me a holler. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll that's, let you know. I, I assume that's the shape it has. It's like a straight line. It's like, what do you mean you're not a side piece? <laughs> yeah. Like someone, someone at the puzzle company was just like messing with everybody. They were. Yeah. That guy. Ugh. Steve. Steve at the puzzle company. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, if you have any feedback for the show, any thoughts, ideas for me, if you have my puzzle piece, be sure to let me know. Uh, you can email all of your thoughts over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com, or you can also just find us over on Reddit, where there's always just a lovely bit of conversation going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Lots of flag submissions happening over on the Reddit at the moment. We do have lots of flag submissions, also voting still going on at this point in time. So we, we have a, a website in the show notes where if you would like to help us determine what the one true flag will be for popcorn culture we would appreciate just a moment of your time to check that out also maybe maybe click the bell ding the bell subscribe click the, sub- click the like button <laughs> do the things <laughs> we don't know if it helps <laughs> search engine optimization people <laughs> leave a comment share it on twitter otherwise until next week pop pop <laughs>